What's up, everybody? It's Matt, and it is Maniac Monday. First and foremost, I hope each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk. All that great jazz. I hope all of you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully, you stayed nice and safe at home and all that. Uh, I know a lot of places are going under curfew due to uh, a lot of the uh, protesting across the country. I know we are going into our second day of curfew here in, in Iowa, uh, or at least here in Des Moines. It's I don't know about anywhere else in in the state, maybe or in the quads. They're they're going through some crazy business, but uh, uh, it's it's definitely getting pretty uh, pretty pretty wild here in, in, in Des Moines. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, let's move on to, uh, the film of the day. Today's film is a, a freaking awesome little, little ditty that I, that I saw over the weekend and immediately knew I wanted to review this for you guys because it's that cool, that much fun. And it's that, that, uh, that it's just awesome. It's a, it's a very fun film from beginning to end. Never really any dull places. Uh, it's got a, a, a kicking soundtrack, uh, or a kicking theme song. Cause, uh, uh, it's very, very, very catchy. I, I, I catch myself, I've been humming it over and over again ever since I saw it Saturday. Uh, I'm going to rewatch it again later today because that's how much I like this movie. It's, it's worth, it's worth the watch, at least that close together. Um, this one's from 1984, so quite a while ago. It was 20, 26, 36 years ago. That's quite some time ago. Uh, we got uh, Robert Ginty, uh, Robert the Ex Exterminator Ginty, yes, from the Exterminator 1 and 2, and uh, what was it, uh, Paper Chase, I think, was his television series he was involved in, and then what was it, Future Bike, I think, was the other one, the one that Mystery Science the Theater often, uh, or the Mystery Science Theater one that they they riffed pretty hardcore and pretty bad. Uh, everybody I feel has done some terrible movies in their in their in their career, and that was definitely one of his low points. Robert Ginty's. Uh, we also got Fred the Hammer, Fred the Hammer. The bad mamma jamma, Fred the Hammer, Williamson. Yes, you got it. You cannot go wrong with him. He is great from uh, everything from from Dust Till Dawn to Boss to uh, I'm not saying the second half of that that uh, title, the the uh, uh, western, the black exploitation western. He did um, uh, some awesome black exploitation films. I'm not gonna lie, I I am a huge huge fan of those those types of films. Uh, he even did a fun one back in the 80s called I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, which makes fun of uh, of, of the uh, the uh, 70s and, and early 80s black exploitation films. They they're very it's a very fun movie. It's a uh, Early Wayans Brothers stuff. If you haven't seen that one, go go check it out. Uh, who else have we got here? Belinda May, Maine. We got Jess Hahn, not to be confused with Jessica Hahn, the uh, the uh, sultry woman of of uh, what was that? Uh, Jim Baker's uh, uh, side piece that he was getting from Tammy Faye Baker, um, which I don't blame him. Tammy Faye, uh, rest, I mean both of you are. Ugh. But Tammy Faye, you're a scary, scary looking lady. I'm sorry. Rest in peace. Uh, we got Morella Bonte, uh, Diana Goodman, and Gordon Mitchell in this. Gordon Mitchell does a pretty good job in it. I'm not gonna lie. I, I he's a fun character. He's kind of a, uh, um, he's not a big, big character, but he's big enough to to make the uh, main lineup. Uh, he's a coast. I would say he's a featuring star. One of those type things. And let's see, this is directed by John Marie Pilardi. <coughs> it is none other, none other than White Fire. Yes, folks, if you have not heard of this, go check it out. It was recently released by Arrow Films US. Um, this thing is so cool. I hate this cover art, though. It looks like some generic um, Expendables type stuff right here on that. I do not like this new commissioned artwork. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and flip to that co that uh, that cardboard lump of crap over there. Um, and then I went ahead and I reversed it to the original artwork on the inside of this Turkish delight. Um, which, by the way, yes, this is made in Turkey, and there are a lot of Turkish actors in 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 this film throughout. Uh, a lot of them play baddies. Besides your your main your main group, they're they're uh, they're all American. The main main guys. Um, 
Uh, let's open that up. And it, this, like I said, it's from Arrow. It does have that reversible cover artwork with that new artwork that I do not care for. Um, and it also has some special, a ton of special features as usual from from Arrow Films. They and this this is a standard issue press DVD Blu-ray. Excuse me. Uh, as far as your special features go, there you go, guys. There's a bunch of stuff on there. Arrow always packs it to the gills with the special features. Um, I always I'm always a huge fan of of what they do. Forget it. I'm just gonna hold this one for for the for it. Um, but uh, check out White Fire. Uh, what is it about? Uh, it's about uh, this brother and sister, uh, uh, Bo and I forget what Bo's sister's name is, Ingrid, Ingrid. But uh, um, they are they are basically on the flea as little children. Their mother and father are are having them escape from this from these bad guys. Um, both the mother and the father get killed in the process. You have some really cool action sequences in there. There's a there's a uh, 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 explosion scene that I swear to Christ that, uh, that stunt man got killed. That's how freaking insane it was. Like he was, he got blown up. <laughs> the, the, the fire completely engulfed all around him and he is running around like, like a, like a freaking running toasted marshmallow just burning up. It's just, it's just crazy. It's cool. Um, there's a lot of insane stunts in this, uh, and you can tell that everybody does their own stunts. Uh, Fred the Hammer does a couple of his own stunts that you clearly it is it is him. There is no but no uh, no stunt actor coming in there. There's a, a particular scene where he jumps off of he's up on this this uh, 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 hill and he jumps off, slides down and jumps. Again, and lands perfectly on his feet in a fighting stance. I was very impressed with Mr. Williamson. I wonder if he had to practice that a couple of times or if he got it down in one fail swoop. He he looked like he did it with finesse. So, so um, I, I give the guy props. I love Fred the Hammer. Um, but uh, they're on the, both the, the, the mother and the daughter, or I mean the daughter and the, and the son, they are carried off by Gordon Mitchell's character. Um, he's kind of becomes a father type to them. He uh, um, basically get, has the, trains them to become fighting machines in other words uh, they know karate they know how to they know how to defend themselves and they're very smart at it they're not not dumb as usual the the cliche the good guys are the smartest people on the TV type type ordeal um, you see this awesome scene right here this is great with a chainsaw this is very early in the beginning as well they are chasing chasing down a uh, good old Robert Ginty and he whips out this chainsaw and starts hacking folks oh it's awesome um but uh basically what it's about uh, them growing up they're they're a part of a diamond stealing uh organization they've been stealing these diamonds from from this uh, uh mine for with the help from one of the the up the main guys that runs the mine uh they've been stealing them and they're looking for a, a, a 200 carat diamond called white fire uh white fire is a uh uh Diamond that is radioactive, and it has only been been uh, talked about in in folklore. It's it's uh, thought to not be not to, it, it was thought to be not exist. One of those kind of things. They find it. You cannot touch the thing because it's it's red hot. Uh, you find that out right away. The guy, one of the the guy that actually finds it. Um, he puts his hands on it and it just like melts his hands on the bottoms. Like it's, it looks rough. It looked like he just went over and, and stuck his hands on a, on a hot griddle, just flat on them and just burned the shit out of them. Uh, it was, it was pretty gnarly. Um, but so you, that's what it's about is the white, white fire diamond. Um, they're trying to heist it out of there. Both uh, um, Bo and Ingrid are are trying to pull a double cross 
in the process, Ingrid gets killed by by um, this uh, uh, Italian girl. I think her name was Sophia. Um, but she, um, uh, uh, her and her goons, which one of them looks like a Turkish Ron Jeremy, which uh, my good friend Justin Gonzalez pointed that out, and it cracked me up. But uh, I kept on when he said that to me. I kept on on the lookout for for a Turkish Ron Jeremy, and boy, did, was he much hairier version too. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, everybody in this has some epic porn mustaches. I, they're all creeper stashes to the max. It's very, very funny. Um, but uh, Ingrid gets killed in the process. They find another girl that happens to look a lot like her. They put her, have her, they pay her to get surgery done, plastic surgery done, and, and miraculously, three weeks later, she all the there's no scarring, no bruising, no 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 swelling, no nothing. She looks exactly like Robert Ginty's sister Ingrid. Um, that always that cracked me up when I when I first saw that like three weeks. Uh, usually it's a lot longer than that, but it, it you do have to suspend disbelief because it is a movie, uh, it, a Turkish film on top of it. Um, which if you've seen any of them Turkish films, some of them can be nightmares, but uh, a lot of them are they're funny nightmares. Uh, I've seen the Turkish ET, and all I can do is just laugh and laugh and laugh. It is just so bad. Um, uh, now like uh, they get they get the surgery. She gets the surgery. She looks like Ingrid. Um, they they begin training her in to speak foreign language, Russian, uh, speak with a Russian accent, or, um, or I think it's Russian with a name like Ingrid, you would think so. But they have her speak foreign language other than their own. Um, she care, picks up an accent. She's all of a sudden like this martial arts expert. Uh, a little weird. Not gonna lie, that whole part it just it blows my mind. Uh, story wise, this thing is not good. It is a mess on the story, but that is not why I like it. I like it because the action is awesome. There's all the stunts, like I said, are just are real. There's no crappy CGI. There's there's real explosions, real fire, real real um uh, uh guns guns being used. You know, I mean, obviously they're using blanks, but uh, there's there's there real guns at least they're stage guns you know it's better than than somebody pulling out a uh, bb gun and and then putting uh uh a cgi gunfire through it you know because so, sometimes that looks really bad i'm not gonna lie uh so that's basically the 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 main setup of the film i don't want to give you too much too much more away uh, as far as storyline goes uh, there's an interesting ending. I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, something I, I did kind of, it's predictable. I'm not going to lie. It's nothing that, that you're going to, um, be blown away with on, on, on plot ends or anything like that. It's extremely predictable, much like a lot of these old, uh, these older exploitation action films. They're, they're extremely predictable, but they are so good. This one is very well made too. If you like the executioner, you will like this one executioner is better by the in my opinion the executioner is way better but if you like it you will like this um as far as the technical side goes um it's probably a middle of the road film uh there there are some gaping plot holes like i said there are a lot of suspension of disbelief moments in this um the acting is okay for the foremost. I mean, I don't really know any of the Turkish actors that were involved, so I can't compare their their performances with any of their uh, with any of their previous work, or or any of their future work as well that um, would have came out between then and and now. You know, um, it still would have been previous work for me, or like past. Um, anyways, but, uh, I'm going to give this a three on the one through five scale for as far as the technicality goes. Um, actually let's drop that down to a two because like I said, there's gaping plot holes. Um, the camera angles are great. There's nothing new or different. Uh, no, like 
like interesting like pov shots through through like a like a telephone or the floor or like they pick up a box of cereal and it's a camera nothing nothing uh artsy or anything like that it's very straightforward and to the to the point so um now as far as entertainment wise goes this thing is super duper entertaining it's probably a four out of five uh it could almost it could take a few it could polish up a few other places and it would be damn near perfect for as far as an entertainment film goes uh um it's just it's a rung below the executioner if you want to go by robert ginty films it's 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 a rung below that but it's it's far from the best of the fred fred the hammer williamson films so let's give this bad boy a 6 out of 10. Call it good. I'm going to go ahead and put that down, that ugly-ass cardboard artwork. Um, I hope you guys have a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk. And I'm going to get the hell out of here. Please do like, share, and subscribe. I see I'm at 175. Let's see if we can get it at 200 by the end of the, by the, end of the summer. That would be awesome. All right, guys. Love your faces.